Hi, right, this is Blaine Pertler with Pertler Electric, and the stator I have here is a 1994 ZR580 carbureted stator. A lot of people kind of refer to these old style stator. Um, they, they change designs through the years. This one, you've got your three lighting coils, you've got your large gauge wires. So we've got one, two, three large lighting coils, and that is your power for all your gauges, your hand warmers, lights, and so forth. And then our two coils that we have here that are stacked on top of each other that are horizontal, those are your ignition coils. And we've got the smaller one on top, larger one on bottom. Uh, the bottom one is what you consider your low speed coil. That one is the one that will have the higher ohm readings. Uh, and then the top one is your high speed coil. So on this particular unit, we've got, we like to take a look at the plugs on everything. And our plugs on this one, we've got basically two plugs coming from it. We've got our four prong and then our three prong here. The four prong, this is our power. Just find our two yellow wires. We've got our two yellow wires on the back side here. And those are your power. And the other two basically are for ignition, just for turning it on and off. Uh, you get your ground here. There's a ground that runs down through the hardness, comes back up here to the other side. This is the four prong where you can go ahead and jump it. You go ahead and make the little jumper wire and, and uh, put it in the between the two non-yellow plugs. So on this unit here, just find our two non-yellow, which is uh, always the male because that's our ground, and then it would be uh, this one here. So you just go ahead and take a you know take wire, put it between the two, and you can jump your you bypass your whole wiring system. You bypass all your gauges, your uh, your ignition and, and the whole nine yards just to check and see if your issue is in the uh, in the stator CDI coils uh, the, the, in, in the major components uh, of your ignition so on this unit the way we measure ohms on this is we'll go ahead and just start for the heck of it here with the uh, lighting coil side basically you're just looking for continuity uh, that's not going to read you know 300 ohms 400 ohms anything like that so on your multimeter, just pick the lowest setting. I've got mine on 200. Some digital ones uh, don't have settings. You just put it on ohms and it reads what it reads. So what we want to do is you just find your two yellow wires and go ahead and just, it doesn't matter uh, positive to negative at all. We're just looking for continuity. And it's going to give you a low number. It's just going to be, you know, point you know, 0.5, that just lets you know that the wires aren't broke anywhere, or uh, if there's a lot of resistance, if they're, you know, it's, it's 50 ohms or something, then you know there is something wrong in it. There's more resistance for one reason or another. Probably something has shorted or grounded out, and it's, uh, you know, barely making a, a electrical path, electrical connection through there. So that can also indicate uh, an issue that way also. So once we know our lighting coil is okay, we can uh, come to our our three prong here and like I say this extra wire here that's actually your ground and and there's a separate plug that just plugs into that should be laying you know right next to uh, where these plug into by your CDI box so um, I I go by wire color sometimes but sometimes wires are spliced or uh, could be changed a little bit color wise year to year so I go more or less on just orientation of the plug so the orientation of the plug on this unit I just put female down and then uh, you know male at uh, on the two top uh, hand corners there so I changed my ohm readings up to 2000 uh, usually it depends on your multimeter usually these are somewhere in the 120 to 170 range something like that but once in a while if you have a, a something that's shorted out or ground out a little bit and it gives you a real high reading it might say like 500 or something I want to see that so I go ahead and put mine up to like a 2000 uh, range on my multimeter I know this stator is okay but like I say uh, if, if it is over 200 ohms if you had an issue with a with a uh, with a short or a ground or what have you you would not see it on 200 it would just say it would basically just say one like that it would just it wouldn't register anything that would tell you that you did have an issue but I like to see the ohms whatever it's going to read so alright so when you are checking checking this unit what you want to do is this is uh, our connector a three prong connector and we're going to check our ignition coils now we've got our low speed which is our large one on the bottom and then our high speed on top the first one we're going to check 
and I don't usually go by wire color just because sometimes the wire color can change people splice wires in and they get all confused so I just try to go by orientation of the plug so orientation of the plug we've got our female on the bottom and then our two males at the top position here so the first thing we'll check is our low speed coil the settings for your multimeter you can set it on the lowest setting which is usually about 200 ohms and get all this but I put mine on 2000 the only reason being is if one of these measures higher for some reason uh, it measures higher than 200 I want to see that although I know because of the ohm readings the ohm specs on this one that it won't but if I get one in from someone to fix or to rewind, then I just put it on 2000 and that way I can usually see the reading right away. If you're on 200 and it reads more than 200, it'll just, it usually gives you a, a one or an error or something like that. And at least you know there's an issue with it anyway. So, so let's go ahead and check this here. We've got our uh, female and our two male connectors. So we're going to check between our two male connectors first. It does not matter uh, positive to negative which leads go on which one so we've got 160 that's our low speed coil on the bottom is 160 and that's the spec for this one here so we know that's good now we check the female to the top left male connector and our top left male connector there we get our 18 that's our high speed coil our small coil on top if you turn this down, it'll give you a little bit more of an accurate reading. Turn it down to 200, and it actually is reading, you know, 17.5, 17.4. Uh, if you have it on a 2,000, some, it rounds it off, so it'll say 18. And our last reading is our female to the top right male, which is both of those coils in series. So, obviously, you just do a little uh, addition in your head, and you can get most of the way there anyway. So, 176.2, 0.3, and, of course, that varies just a little bit because of the wire and so forth. It might not uh, add up exactly every time. So, but, uh, so we know that the ignition coils on this 94ZR580 stator here are good. And the, the ground wire here, we can just check that for continuity real quick, too. You just... It doesn't matter again, positive, negative, which one you're using. And then uh, run this over to the negative plug on this side. Check for continuity, 0.4. So I, on the plug, on that four prong plug, you've got your two power, you've got your ground, and then it's the one other one you have not used yet. So there's our 0.3 on it, so we know we have continuity. So that's how you check, like I say, it's a 94 ZR580 stator. Uh, a lot of the early 90s carb staters, uh, for a lot of the years, the 700s, 500s, 400s, all that stuff, they're very similar to this design, and usually about the only thing that varies is just the, uh, the, the ignition coils that are on those.